Hello, my name is Tamar Friedman, and on behalf of Jewish Funders Network, I am pleased to welcome you to today's webinar on Jewish family giving, bringing your children to the philanthropic table. This engaging webinar is hosted by my colleagues at Jewish Teen Funders Network, and we will explore the benefits and impacts of involving the younger generation in the family giving experience. They will share tools, best practices, and games in order to engage and enhance conversations around giving. And with that, I am happy to introduce my colleague, Wayne Green, the Executive Director of Jewish Team Funders Network. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Tamar. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our webinar today. Um, as you will see um, uh, on the next slide, we have a question for you to be able to type in the chat box. Um, and to really start to think about the importance of why we're engaging children in family philanthropy, uh, we prompt you to write an answer to this question. What is something your parent, grandparent taught you that you now shared with your own children? Uh, when I think about and reflect on my experiences, I often think about the lessons I learned from my grandmother, who was very engaged philanthropically um, compared to my parents and how that has shaped me in terms of how I think about philanthropy today. So uh, I encourage you um, throughout the session to think about this question and type it into the chat box um, as we move through. So I would like to uh, introduce myself. Um, as Tamar said, I'm Wayne Green, the Executive Director of the Jewish Teen Funders Network. My colleagues, Alana Hollander, who is Community and Special Projects Manager, and Danielle Siegel, Senior Program Manager, will be uh, on throughout this webinar and be able to showcase with you uh, the incredible work that we are putting out to the field from the Jewish Teen Funders Network. So the question is, what is the Jewish Teen Funders Network? Uh, the Jewish Teen Funders Network is the leading organization in North America, which is supporting, developing, and creating Jewish teen philanthropy programs, content, and partnerships to develop our next generation of engaged Jewish leaders and change makers. JTFN also serves to strengthen the network of professionals in the field through the development of new standardized training and facilitation and creating new innovative activities and tools to be used in programs. I'm just gonna run through what we're gonna be doing in our session today. So our session will cover why talk to your children about philanthropy? And we think about this as starting to talk to children from elementary uh, level up. Uh, we will talk about what this means for your family in terms of family philanthropy. We'll provide you with methods and structures uh, to think about how you can engage your family in these conversations. And we will provide you with how to start these conversations with tools and different activities that you can do with your family. I'm excited to introduce you to uh, Alana, who's now going to be able to run us through the next session. Thank you, Wayne. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wanted to get us started today um, with the question, why involve your children in giving? Um, why is it important for us to talk to our kids about giving? Um, and if we look at statistics, there's actually some interesting uh, data on this. Um, there was a study from IUPUI, Lilly School of Philanthropy, uh, that actually said when parents give to charity, their children, both their sons and their daughters, are more likely to give to charity. So we understand that this is actually really important to start having these conversations because um, this is going to be throughout their life and we're going to see these trends happening later on. The statistic actually showed that parental giving is linked with an 8.7 percentage increase in their children's likelihood to give. Um, we also saw from the Generation Impact Study that 90% of next-gen donors involved were volunteering before the age of 21. And getting children to be engaged in different ways, including their time and their money and their talent, it also leads to this lifelong commitment to being a change maker. And these things we understand are not mutually exclusive. So um, as children are getting involved in direct service, as they get involved in philanthropy, we know that these things are intrinsically linked and so important for the longevity of their commitment to uh, the philanthropic world. Um, and so from here, we want to figure out, um, these are some of the bigger points around uh, giving and some of the data, but what does it mean for your family? Um, and so Danielle, my colleague Danielle, is going to walk us through what that means. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alana. 
So what does this mean for your family to, in, to involve the younger generations in your philanthropy and decision making? Well, it is incredibly empowering for the youth voice. And what does it mean to allow your teens, your children to be involved in that conversation and really have a say in what happens with your philanthropic giving? Um, there are also some really great benefits for the teens and the children involved. Um, it's incredibly identity building and character building, being involved in a process like this that really can make a difference to your community, to the world. Um, it's also a huge amount of responsibility. And we truly believe that no child is too young for responsibility as long as it's done in an age appropriate way. So this is a really excellent way to bring that notion of real life experience and responsibility um, into your family. Um, and it also allows uh, the younger generation to be prepared for the future. Um, is it that you want your um, children to take over family philanthropy um, um, a few years down the line? Um, will it give them skills that they can use in other areas of their life? Uh, this is actually a really great moment to give them skills that they can take forward. Um, this is also a wonderful moment to bring in some Jewish content into your giving. I mean, to really examine kind of what is, what is Jewish about giving. And even if the recipient organization isn't Jewish, it can still be Jewish giving. Um, for example, um, if your children decide that they want to give to an organization that helps animals, um, maybe it's a local organization that doesn't necessarily work um, in the Jewish field, but Judaism has lots of things to say about how we treat animals and um, what we do to look after them. So you can still find those pieces of Jewish content at that moment. And we are going to dive into some more ways later about how we can infuse that Jewish content in a really accessible, tangible way. There's also the notion of our family, our family legacy, what has happened to us in the past and our family values, what matters to us right now. So, so understanding why your family gives in the first place and where has this come from? Um, there's a great value, a phrase, which is la dor va dor, um, which means from generation to generation. So really taking into account that family history. And also your Jewish heritage that upholds your Jewish values and your connection to giving. Where is the intersect between your Jewish values and your Jewish heritage and how you give now? So now that we've done the kind of the why and the, the what, we're gonna go into the how, and we're gonna look at some methods and structures for including uh, the, um, the children, the younger generation in your family giving. So I'm going to hand back over to Alana. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so as Danielle mentioned, we're gonna look at some methods and structures that you could look into implementing within your own family. Um, the first thing that we think about is making a collective decision as a family. Um, you can think about uh, having your own little grant making pool and then uh, everybody gets to be involved in the discussion and make a decision. Um, you can also empower your child to make an individual's decision about where they want to give. Um, and then you also could have your, the siblings within your home, um, having the children within your home and empower them to make a collective decision among themselves. Um, and these are just three different ways that we can look at doing a grant making pool um, or a pool of money right here within our own homes. Um, another method is we can actually include children in the conversation and get their opinions um, but they don't get to make the final direct giving decision um, that you are sharing with them the type of giving that you'll be doing um, and ask them about it and share with them about it and include them in that conversation. But if you're not in a position or maybe they're too young, um, it would be an opportunity to include them in this and get them to be knowledgeable about what you're doing, um, but ultimately uh, make the giving decision yourself. Um, and then finally, another way to be looking at things is something called the mail method. Um, Ron Lieber actually described in his book, uh, the, opposite, the Opposite of Spoiled, um, this method where you can actually collect um, 
envelopes from campaign letters. I'm sure many of you get them annually, uh, where different organizations will ask at the end of the year um, for their annual campaigns. Um, and you can actually go through with your children letter by letter um, and have the family make a decision that way. Um, so they understand really um, all the different places that you might be giving to. Um, and you can either, again, use uh, this as an opportunity to make a collective decision as a family or empower your children to make a decision about where we're going to give this year. Um, it also gives them an understanding of where you've been giving in the past. Um, and then you also can ask your teens to choose one additional organization that maybe is outside of the realm of where you've given in the past. Just like we nurture children um, in other areas about what they're passionate about, um, philanthropy is another opportunity to nurture your children's passions. Um, so if you engage your teens and ask them, think about what they're really passionate about. Think about what is really important to them and to choose an organization that falls within that category. Um, so from here, these are some of the methods and the structures, but how do we start having specific conversations about these things? And so Danielle is gonna actually um, guide us through some of those pieces. Thank you so much, Alana. So how do we start this process to have these conversations? And a key way that we begin these conversations is through the lens of Jewish values. The benefit to Jewish values is that there is no right or wrong answer. It's all about your own opinion, what is important to you. Values can sometimes be described as attributes or sometimes morals. So it's really what is important to you as a person and also what could be considered to be important um, with your family as a group. And the wonderful thing about values, it is very accessible for any person of any age because everyone can really nurture their own opinion and um, really explain to a group about what is important to them. So we love using this as a lens and as a starting off point and um, because so many different topics can be discussed through the lens of Jewish values. So there are several Jewish values. There are several wonderful values that are um, linked to Jewish tradition. Um, we've identified seven, which we use throughout our programming as the key values of philanthropy. And those values are responsibility uh, for ourselves and for others. Um, service, so the notion of work and what we do to make things happen. Um, loving kindness, um, being good to everyone, also ourselves. Um, respect or human dignity and how we uphold that. Preservation, um, which can mean um, you could be talking about preserving the earth, preserving nature, but it's also about looking after and guarding and what are the things in our life that need that we would like to change and what are things that we would like to remain the same and how do we preserve that. Um, the value of hope being really positive and an outlook that we can make the world a better place. <clears throat> and justice. Um, and the word Sadaka, which is giving, has the same root as the word justice. So those are the seven values that we have identified as being really key to the philanthropic process. So we've looked at kind of like the lens of what we use and now we really want to give you an idea of some um, prompt ideas and games um, of how you might use that. So we have, um, we have a Jewish value spinner available on our website, which is a great interactive tool. So you can explore some of these values. So I'm going to show that to you now. This is our Jewish value spinner. It has all seven values. Um, and it's, um, you click it and it spins. And when you click again, it stops and you can, uh, it, this little arrow chooses which value you would like to examine. So this is just really great for a conversation starter. If you want to pick a value at random and talk about it with your family. Um, some prompts that we like using are, how have you seen this value present in your life? Um, 
Another question that we can ask is, for instance, it's stopped on justice. Um, how have you um, seen this value absent from the world or from your life? And there are lots of different questions and prompt questions that you can use in conjunction with this wheel. And we're going to go into some of those examples later of some, um, of, uh, some questions that you can ask. So the other great tool that we have is JTFN's new Jewish philanthropy deck, which is a pack of cards that, um, that are split into three categories. We have value, those values that we just described. There are seven of those. We also have 22 justice issue cards, which display a whole range of topics um, of ideas that um, people might be interested in solving or helping or issues that people want to change or make a difference to in the world. Um, as well as the 22 that are named in the pack, there's also a blank one. So people can also name their own and add it to the pack. We also have 12 mixed vote or <clears throat> principles or actions that can help with um, another lens to discuss philanthropy. Um, there are 12 of those. So this is kind of the, the makeup of the pack. And I just want to show you some examples of how you might use these cards. So the values cards, as I said, that there are seven of them. Uh, here are just three examples. We have service, um, loving kindness, and responsibility. Um, and you'll notice that the cards have it in uh, Hebrew and English, and they also have a traditional quote um, as well, um, linking back to a traditional text to really um, highlight that value and so that you can explore a little bit more about what it means in the Jewish tradition. Um, we then have our mitzvot cards. Here are an example of just three. We have make fair judgments, do not stand idly by, and love your fellow. Um, and again, this is punctuated by the quote um, and where it is originally um, cited um, in Jewish tradition. And here are our justice issues. Uh, three examples, we have healthcare and medicine, mental health and homelessness and affordable housing. So these are just a great pack of cards that you can use in a multitude of different ways. And we're gonna go over um, some of those um, to give you some ideas. So one example is doing a two card draw. So here we have a pile of justice issues and a pile of values. And at random, you pick one from one pile and one from the other. So from justice issues, we have education and literacy. And from values, we have human dignity or kabod. So uh, uh, these cards can be used um, as a question, as a game, to see how the two cards can link to each other. And there are infinite answers. Again, there's no right or wrong, but this is a great way to start that conversation. So for instance, if you've pulled education and literacy and human dignity, kabod, um, you might be able to make those connections, like for instance, by creating access to education and literacy for all, you build up human dignity. Um, it is something that everyone should have a right to. So by doing that, you've kind of explored what each of those cards mean and you've made a connection between the two. Another example <laughs> is to do a three card draw. So we've got justice issues, values and mitzvot this time. So if we pick one from justice issues, we here have Jewish community. If we pick one from values, we've got tikva, hope. And our mitzvah card is pursue justice. So again, it's about looking at those cards, looking at some of the text studies that are attached on the card um, and seeing where those links are. How can we interweave them? How can one be a lens for each other? So for instance, here we've got Jewish community, hope and pursuing justice. So maybe you might find a link as far as, as we hope for a more equitable future, we can start in our own Jewish community by creating more just and inclusive and equitable spaces and how that can be a positive knock-on effect for the rest of society and the rest of the world. So that's just one example of how you might use um, this kind of method with drawing cards at random to really dig deeper and see where those connections are. Another game that we like using is a game we call Rush Up. Um, this is an example of one of our program leaders at our training in December playing this game. He has a card on his head. Um, the card is Responsibility. Um, and we recommend either using the Justice Issues cards or one of the Values cards. 
and the player puts it on their forehead and they have to guess which card they have pulled by asking questions to the rest of the group. They can ask yes, no questions um, about what does their card pertain to? Um, what does it include? Is there a target group um, that is affected particularly by this value or this justice issue? And by process of elimination, they work out what card is on their head. But it's a really great way to do a deep dive and to challenge people to ask a really wide variety of questions in order to get to the card that you have chosen. So it's an exploratory game, um, but it's interactive and it adds that kind of game play to exploring values and the justice issues. So we've gone over some tangible games that you can play. Um, I'm now going to pass over to Alana, who's going to give us some more ideas about conversation starters and how we might begin those conversations. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so where we can start, we just looked at all these different uh, games that we can be playing with the cards and how we can interact with them. Um, and so to start our conversations, we can actually use the cards as part of that process. Um, so in order to use the cards to start a conversation, uh, one way that you might look to do this is to use the justice issue cards and have your teens prioritize which issue is most important to them. Um, so you can actually lay the cards out on a table and have them move everything around um, and just uh, put them in order of what is most important. Um, sometimes when we're looking into organizations, um, you know, or different things that we want to care about, it's really hard. There's a lot of issues out there. Um, so this is just a nice way to uh, take a look and narrow our lens a little bit so we can really understand what's out there. Um, the other um, thing that we can actually use uh, these cards for is um, we can actually uh, compare our top two cards. Um, if you pick two cards and you have your children pick two cards um, to be your top priority, let's say you choose a values card and a justice issue, or maybe your top two justice issues from the pack, um, and you invite your children to do the same, it's a great way to have a conversation. Okay, what was most important in the values to you? What was most important in the justice issues to you and why? And see where there's overlap, see where things, where things may differ for each of you. And it's a great jumping off point to getting into a further discussion. Um, you also potentially could tie back this moment to your, um, your mail method. If we go back a few minutes uh, earlier, as we, earlier as we discussed um, how you might use your annual campaign and the mail method of going through the different letters, you can actually start using the cards um, to identify which justice issue or which value does this particular organization um, in their annual campaign align with? So we can even start prioritizing and organizing uh, where we want to be giving um, in the, as part of these conversations. Um, the other thing you can do is share stories. So if you pick a card, um, part of our giving experience is, is personal. Part of it is really understanding how are we connected. So if you pick a card about a specific justice issue, you can actually share a personal story about how you're connected, or maybe about how your family is connected to that issue. Um, you can invite your children to do the same. Maybe they have a particular experience um, or something they've heard about or something they saw in a movie or in TV. Um, but to start understanding more in depth about what justice issues are there out in the world um, and how are they connecting to our values. So these are just some of the ways to use the cards as conversation starters. Um, some other ways to get uh, the conversation going is that we've uh, come up with some prompts that you might want to share uh, with your children and that uh, they can ask you um, that can be reciprocated between uh, both of you. Um, and so one of the questions we have is, what is your first memory of giving to charity? 
Um, and I think this will be so meaningful for you to be able to share your story with your children. Um, they might not know about that and it might start very early for you. And what would that mean for you to share a story about your first giving memory as a child and for them to be thinking about you um, so young and involved in this work? Um, so there's that opportunity, but then also putting into context um, how they're giving and how they understand it and when was their first interaction with it. Um, the other thing uh, that you can ask uh, to one another is what words would you describe our family with? Um, so to choose two to three words you would use to describe the family. Um, and this is a great temperature check to see where your kids are at. Um, does giving or charity or philanthropy come up in their description of your family? If it doesn't, is that um, a surprise to you? Um, and how do we maybe pivot um, that that should be a part of their understanding of who your family is? So it's a great way to get an idea of what, um, how your children are seeing uh, your family and their perspective. Um, and it might be a moment that you might want to make a few shifts or say, okay, we need to have more conversations. Um, and so this is also um, an opportunity to, um, this is also an opportunity to continue that um, with them. And so the last piece is, um, how would you describe me in three words? Um, so each person can ask one another, um, and in the same way, how would you describe me? Um, and then as the parent, um, they can respond back to you. So um, this is also a great temperature check to see where you are at, where your children are at, and to share back. So then we came up with some questions for children to specifically ask their parents. Um, and so one of the questions is, what do you remember your parents telling you about giving? We talked earlier about the legacy of family philanthropy. And so what we want to be doing is sharing these stories. This connection to giving is something that we pass down. And so um, this is a great way to continue that narrative and to continue that story. Um, we also might want to ask, what is the history of family within our philanthropy? Maybe there's a specific person or a specific story that got your family involved in the work that it does today. And so that's another opportunity to, again, share those stories, share that history. Um, and then another question your children can ask you is, as a result of our family history in philanthropy, what values or priorities have been passed down? So if there are things that your family really upholds, that your parents upheld, um, what do you want your children to carry forward? So this is a great question for them to be asking you so they can get a better sense and understanding of that. So finally, um, we came up with some questions that you may want to ask your children. Um, and so the first one is, what do you think the biggest issue is affecting youth today? This is a great way for them to gauge and to share with you where they are and where their peers are at and how they're seeing the world around them. Um, another question that uh, you might want to ask um, is, what issue in the world would you like to solve and why? Um, again, this whole conversation has been about trying to identify what's important to them. And this will help you um, continue to have these conversations and even be able to be brought back into how you might want to be giving as a family together. Um, and then finally, other than family members, who do you look up to and see as a role model? Um, so this just puts into context who they might really care about, what are their passions, and who do they want to emulate. Um, so these are just, again, a great way to temperature check where your kids are at. So I want to um, 
finally say um, we have lots of pieces um, that we want to be thinking about and we also want to leave time for you to ask questions and, and talk a little bit more with Wayne Green about things that are happening with JTFN and how this engagement can continue um, and how we can continue to have these conversations with our children. So I'm going to bring back Wayne, um, who's going to go over some of these pieces with us. Thank you, Lana. So we provided a lot of information uh, in the last half an hour, and we wanted to reiterate that the opportunity for you to participate and to learn with us today is really the start of the opportunities that you have to start to bring in your teens and your children into understanding what it means for you as a family to think about philanthropy. So we have a question that we asked right at the beginning of the the, the webinar, which is more about what, what did you learn from your family? Uh, and, you know, when I, I mentioned briefly at the, the start of this webinar that I had conflicting sometimes uh, lessons that I learned from my grandparents versus my parents. Uh, and, you know, when I think about having children uh, one day, this question is very much about what we want to think about who we are today. And so taking into account what we've covered in the webinar, what would you like your kids to remember from the messages you told them? It's really important that whilst we often talk about it sometimes um, amongst your families, we talk about philanthropy, we talk about giving, I, I definitely do that with my nieces and nephews. What are the lessons that we really want our, those individuals, um, collective group of family members to really remember when they think about what would they answer? So it's interesting if you, write this down and even ask your kids to write down what is the message that they've heard from from you uh, and so i encourage you to take away this question with you um, as you start to think about what are the lessons and messages that you really want your kids to remember from you um, in years to come the other thing that uh, we spoke about in this webinar was the the values that uh, we identified to be the core of what we think about philanthropy for teens today. Uh, we spoke about the seven, Danielle spoke about the seven core values, hope, preservation, responsibility, justice, loving kindness, human dignity, and service. And one of the critical pieces, and I'm gonna bring Danielle um, back on camera just to ask her, is you know when we think about these, these primary values in our programs uh, that we do with our teens, the question is when, how do we ensure that these values are not just uh, tokenistic and we say this is the, you know, the value of hope, how do we actually ensure that they are lived as an experience when teens are actually learning about philanthropy? Great, great question. I think it's, it's really about internalizing those values and seeing where it can be interwoven in all different areas of a teen or a child's life. So that is something that they embody so it almost seems natural that they're bringing that process into their philanthropy as well. So we do a lot of exercises within team philanthropy of values exploration. So at the beginning, they really get that opportunity to decide what are the values that are important to them and why are they important to them and how does it manifest in different areas of their life. And once some of that is established and it is something that is ingrained in them about recognizing their values, it then becomes almost natural, like breathing, that those values also become a framework for philanthropy. The, the other huge value of using, the other value of using values is that it's okay if they change. Um, as we go through our life and as we grow up, some values might switch with other values in prioritization and importance within our own life. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. But if when you're younger, you held a certain value to be your most important, maybe five years later, it looks a little bit different. And that's okay. Because as our identities change, our values do too. So in having those discussions with your family on a regular basis, you're able to really keep um, the pulse on values are important to your families, which ones have been ongoing for several years, which other ones have been changing. Um, and it allows those teens and those children to really examine what are the values in their life and how they can bring it to different areas of what they do, whether that is philanthropy, whether that is school, whether that is their contribution within the Jewish community. Um, it's incredibly multifaceted. Yeah, I mean, I, the other thing that uh, I was thinking about as you were speaking is the ability for 
um, children to really live the values. So it's one piece to kind of identify what the value is. And I was thinking about, you know, even within family structures, if a family identifies, say, loving kindness as one of the values that they, uh, which really guides the family's giving, how are they also embodying loving kindness within their interaction with one another? How are their, when teens are yelling and shouting at one another, how are you bringing in loving kindness into the experience of what the family is? And then how do they give? So it's also about, you know, what are these values um, being explicit and implicit in the dynamics of the family and also in the thinking about how they give? Um, you know, there was a couple of questions that came up on the, the chat. And so I just want to respond to a couple of them. One of, one, one of them was, at what age is it appropriate to start to talk about giving with, um, with children? Uh, if you ask us, we say it's never too young. Uh, to start to think about and talk to teens about and children about uh, giving. Uh, as we mentioned throughout this webinar, there's a multitude of ways to talk to children about giving. Uh, and it really comes down to the complexity of language uh, and the information that you're sharing with them. So you could have a simple uh, cute tzedakah box um, that you have at your Shabbos table and you, you know, putting in a dollar or we have some people on the call from Israel, you may put in a couple of shekels. Uh, into that uh, tzedakah box. So there's different ways that you can start to think about uh, using uh, philanthropy and giving and the way that in the nuance about how you talk about it will vary according to the age of the children that you have in your family. Uh, the other piece too, and, and I mentioned Israel because, you know, when I think about the cultural sensitivities and the differences from countries on how we think about uh, giving, you know, I'm very mixed accent from Australia, born in South Africa, and now live in, in the US. The way that we did philanthropy in Australia was very different. And even the work that we do in Israel and how families talk about philanthropy compared to the United States, it is different. And so it's about how are you within your family structures really offering teens to think about what it means to give uh, and what does it mean to give your time, but also what does it mean to actually give money financially to advance different issues. Um, and we see that certainly right now when we're living in a world of uh, COVID, where we have an opportunity to really think about what is happening in the environment around us. Uh, how are we offering support to the, the nurses and the doctors, um, institutions that are providing food for the hungry? You know, there's so many different ways that you can bring in your families into these decisions to really share with them the opportunity to talk about what philanthropy can do and why it's important today. So I want to take uh, the opportunity to thank you all so much for coming today. Um, we will have this webinar available um, online, which is being recorded, so you'll be able to come back uh, to have a look at it. Uh, and we will also um, have information about how you can reach out to either Alana, Danielle, or myself. Uh, we are available uh, for consultation to families on how to think about uh, doing philanthropy in a much more strategic way for your families. Uh, we have a number of resources that are also available through our website, www jtfn.org and the cards are also available for purchase so we will make sure that all that information is up on the website uh, both on the jfn website and the jtfn website um, and i thank you so much for your time uh, and i hope that you all stay well and take care thank you thank you so much to wayne danielle and alana i really appreciate this presentation so thought-provoking and thank you for sharing all these incredible resources that you've produced through the last few years. Um, and like, like Wayne said, we will be putting this on our we website and you can reach out to all the, they have all their information there, but if you also had any questions that I can help with or help you connect with anybody, I'm at Tamar at jfunders.org and hope to see you all again soon at the many other learning opportunities that JFN is, is offering in the coming weeks. Thank you.